Today we're looking at the chromium reactions and colour changes using this gorgeous OCR resource which I'll link in the video description but it can be found on their website. I'll be giving each of the chromium substances here some context using reactions and providing general explanations of what we see happen cross-matched to your specification. We're starting off with this pale purple complex ion which can be formed when a soluble salt of chromium-3 is added to water and the chromium-3 plus ions form coordinate bonds with the water molecule ligands. It's a pale purple oxyhedral complex ion which can actually appear green. This green colour is more widely seen in organic chemistry when we oxidise primary and secondary alcohols or aldehydes using acidified potassium dichromate 6. That colour change is famously orange to green and the green colour is because of this complex ion. Next up we are looking at a precipitation reaction and it takes place when dropwise alkali is added to our previous solution. We can either use ammonia or a named hydroxide here like sodium hydroxide and the ionic equation is the same either way. Here that chromium 3 plus ion is reacting with hydroxide ions to form a dark green precipitate. It's common in the exam to need to provide state symbols for this one so watch out. Next up, and the ammonia is back again, but this time we've gone a bit far and completely replaced all the water ligands from the first solution, the hexa-aqua complex ion, with ammonia ligands. So we're not doing dropwise anymore, this is addition of a lot of concentrated ammonia. I should mention here too that the OCR sheet does have a minor typo on it, this should be 3 plus here for the chromium, but it's still a fab resource. The chromium-3 hexa-aqua complex ion can be seen here in a ligand substitution reaction with the 6NH3s to form a new complex ion with a different colour because of the different ligands. The purple shade is now darker. Next up, and we've gone over the top again, but this time with hydroxide. The precipitate we made before now reacts with further hydroxide ions and forms a new dark green complex ion to add to our list. This dark green complex ion has six hydroxide ligands and we can see now that the total charge on the outside of the square brackets is 3 minus. That's because the chromium is 3 plus and each of the six hydroxides is 1 minus respectively. Now for both of these two we seemingly had different starting points. One from the hexa-aqua chromium 3 complex ion and the other from the precipitate which we formed from dropwise alkali earlier on. Well, what we can also do is flip this round and provide an alternative equation for each of them just in case we're asked to consider it happening from a different starting point in the exam. First off, we can make the complex ion with six ammonia ligands starting from the precipitate and then we can make the complex ion with the six hydroxide ion ligands starting from the hexa-aqua solution of the chromium-3. Just watch your balancing of these equations, please. On the right over here we have our orange dichromate 6 ion and the context here shifts to redox. So we're moving away from precipitation and ligand substitution and we're now looking at a redox aspect of this sheet. On the OCR specification you need to know how to interconvert between two different oxidation numbers for the chromium. That means moving back and forth between two different oxidation numbers and for the chromium that's plus 6 and plus 3 respectively. The dichromate ion here contains chromium with a plus 6 oxidation number. That's why we call it dichromate 6. And be careful not to write this as a chromium 6 plus ion as it needs those oxygens to be involved. You need to learn how we get this chromium reduced to a plus 3 oxidation number and we are able to write that as a Cr3 plus ion. My advice is to use zinc and acid following the reaction equation that you can see on screen. This is a redox reaction, so it can be constructed using half equations in acidic conditions. And remember, the chromium here is being reduced from plus 6 to plus 3. Moving over to the left hand side, we're going to finish the interconversion, going back the other way. We now need to get back to the plus 6, and for this we're going to use our final chromium on the page, which is our yellow solution of chromium 6. Our chromium 3 plus solution that we've just made now needs to be changed to this in another redox reaction, which sees the chromium oxidized from the plus 3 we've just made back to a plus 6. 
Yes, it's a different uh, chromium containing substance, but it still has that chromium in a plus six oxidation number. That's the crucial part. The conditions this time are very specific. We need it to be hot, alkaline hydrogen peroxide. And just as before, this is a redox reaction. It can actually be constructed from two half equations, this time, however, using alkaline conditions. Don't forget that these last two are redox reactions that allow you to interconvert between two different chromium oxidation numbers, just moving back and forth between the two. And you need to be able to suggest reagents and reactions for them and everything else on this page as part of your A-level. So here's all the information that I mentioned in this tutorial. If you'd like to watch the same kind of thing, but for the copper, manganese, or the iron reactions, then the links to those videos are on screen now. If you'd also like to go over different things about ligands and complex ions associated to transition elements, then those links are available too. Please leave this video a like before you go, because it really does help support my channel. And until next time, as ever, everyone, happy revising.